how are you doing? I must have the uh, cleanest kitchen in the country I think at least uh, I'd stand a chance of winning the award wow well it's uh, what day 14 now isn't it two weeks of lockdown and um, yeah the days kind of they're all the same really aren't they I'm sure it's the same for most of you you wake up in my case half past four in the afternoon and you do your ablutions you have a wash and brush your teeth have a cup of tea something to eat and then you sit there and twiddle your thumbs um, it's currently nice and sunny and uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's eagerly awaiting this three-week review of the situation by the government um, I mean seriously I'm praying that there's going to be some kind of easement which will allow us all to have some kind of normality but until then what can you do um, a few viewers have suggested that I uh, do some maintenance videos on Aslan um, only problem with that is Aslan is in tip-top shape she doesn't require any maintenance at all she's generally proved to be very reliable I mean the roof is peeling a bit where the previous owner repainted the roof but the paint wasn't compatible with the existing paint which was sound and it's sort of peeling off in bits I could scrape that off and give it a paint with another paint problem with that is I don't have a paintbrush and there's nowhere in Garstang that sells paintbrushes and I can't really justify going out on my bike to Preston which is about eight miles away to buy a paintbrush if I get stopped and they say is your journey essential I'm gonna to have to say yeah I need a paintbrush so that's not possible at the moment I am gonna do um, another cooking vid either next time or the video following the next one um, in season 6 episode 2 I made a pudding a naughty experience um, so I think I'll make another pudding um, another naughty pudding um, also I'm thinking because uh, I've had permission to take off and fly my drone uh, from the owners of the marina that I'm in so I thought I'd won't be any kind of major thing but I'd get the drone up and have a good fly around the immediate area and show you what's around so that's a uh, yeah I'll either do that next or I'll do the cooking next all right so for this video I thought I'd have a look at some more photos and uh, I'm going to do a few this time uh, I think there's nine photos to look at and uh, as well as show the uh, various cameras I used over the years to take the uh, the pictures so if I just get this going where are we Get and work, you silly machine. Yeah. Why aren't you thinking what I need? Ah, here we go. And hopefully this is recording. <laughs> Don't you just love technology? Right. Well, this is a Fuji XE1. This is a camera bought after I had... Uh, a Leica M6 which I'll show the photos for that after these ones good little camera this um, and uh, that's a 35 millimeter f1.4 which works out with the crop factor of the sensor at around about 48 or 49 millimeters so near enough a 50 mil and the first photo I took this when uh, my wife and I because uh, we lived in Cumbria we'd gone to we were going to go to a little 
island called Walney Island near Barrow in Furness. And uh, we were we were stood. You you get out there on a boat, and we're stood on this jetty. And this boy who's also waiting, he just decided to just lie down on his front. And it turns out afterwards he was peering through a tiny little hole that's uh, in the jetty. And uh, the tide's going out here, going to the left. I just like this photo because of, of the depth. Plus the fact there's this uh, boy just lying there. Um, yeah, so for no other reason than the depth, you, you, the eye is sort of drawn along the jetty and you have all the, the contrasty clouds. It was a very nice day, very nice day indeed. Yeah, I think I called that dead boy. <laughs> right. The next one, <laughs> yeah, this was one of my rare encounters with uh, people who have a peculiar sort of uh, interpretation of the law. It's the old, it's the classic of, uh, I think, therefore I'm right. Um, it's, it's believed by a lot of people that you can't go taking photographs of strangers in public. Um, and because they believe that's the case, then that is the case. Um, but this was at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Lots of sort of shows, comedy, dancing, singing, all kinds of things going on all over. I mean, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival is a millions and millions of people come over a 14 day period and it's all spread out over the streets of Edinburgh, plus some halls and you know, theatres and things like that. Um, but inevitably, if you have huge gatherings of people, you're going to have stalls pop up of things that are nothing whatsoever to do with the Edinburgh Fringe. And this particular one was a stall. Um, it's called uh, Ugandan Handbags with the, uh, the catchy slogan, designed in Uganda, made in Britain. So I, got, I took one shot further back of the stall and then I, I just noticed this, this woman, this black woman, wearing this fantastic suit and this of, is that a Trilby or a Panama? I don't know, but this hat. And she had this really deep, deep voice. And she was demonstrating handbags to this lady here who was actually facing towards her. And I just moved in a bit closer, got my camera like that, <coughs> excuse me. And she, she just bunged her hand up right in front of her face and just went in a deep voice, no photographs and i'm like whoa sorry you know um and she goes you're not allowed to take photographs of people in in the public and a terrible accent i don't mean anything by it so please um and i said well you know i, I beg to differ you know in in britain you're allowed to take photographs in public because there is no expectation of privacy in a public place i mean privacy public two opposing words that don't go together. You can't be private in public. But anyway, that's the law. Um, so I said, well, I'll, I'll show you the photo. So I showed her the photo and she instantly saw her hand in front of her face. And that was it. And she was just like, mm -hmm. and off she went, but she was muttering about, you know, photographs and mm -hmm. so, yeah. But for me, I mean, the texture on her hand is incredible. Um, but for me, I mean, the fact that hand is there like that, but the reaction of the, the customer, she has this amazing sort of surprised kind of look on her face. I just, um, yeah, I just absolutely adore this photograph. Yeah. Right. And another one. This was taken with the Fuji as well. This was in Barrow in Furness. I was stood outside a shop, I think it was a charity shop, waiting for my wife to come out because you can only look at so many uh, so many china plates and things, can't you? Uh, and this, this guy comes walking along and I think, I think it must have been auto-focused at the time. 
but uh, I just lifted the camera up and took the picture. Um, all of my photos are one shots. I, I'm not like, uh, I don't do the old DSLR, digital SLR thing of machine gunning the target as I, uh, the subject, as I always like to call it. It's just, <laughs> you know, a thousand frames per second, hoping that one of the shots is okay. These are all one shots and it's just clunk like that. And I put this on a Fuji forum a Fuji photography forum and it had a really good response and people started uh, putting their own captions to it but my favorite one uh, if you're familiar with the band Metallica the drummer Lars Ulrich uh, he had a run-in where he tried to sue Napster um, because the band's uh, songs were on freely available on Napster um, he was hated as a result of it but 10 years later bands started noticing that uh, their work was being freely distributed uh, with no recompense um, recompense is that the word no remuneration for the artist uh, and a cartoon came as a result of that you had Lars Ulrich who was a, portrayed as a tiny little figure um, and he was climbing all over his bandmate James Hetfield who was portrayed as this huge sort of gorilla and it ends with the tagline um, money good Napster bad so that's what the yes the slogan was for this picture money good Napster bad yeah <laughs> it's, I, I mean he, he's perfect awesome Awesome photo, oh, I really do like that one. All right, then we come to the uh, the Leica M6 with a 50 millimeter F1.5 Voigtlander Nocturne. This is a 35 millimeter camera, rangefinder, totally manual. Yeah, Edinburgh Fringe Festival, um, not massively sharp. Uh, as Henri Cartier Bresson, the famous street photographer once said, sharpness is a bourgeois concept and it's easy to get hung up with the technical quality of photographs you know if you zoom right in to each pixel you know they're pin sharp and and so much is lost it's you know for me it's always subject subject first technical quality second so this one is hyper focused which means the lens is set to say three meters away everything for a one meter distance either side of that three meter point um, will be roughly in focus so you can just pick the camera up clunk just like that um, but I just I just love this photo because you got this huge he, he was six must have he t I'm six one and he he was over me like that so he must be what six five something like that boots kilt but this minute little dog little dachshund little sausage dog and uh, he's wearing i think he's wearing like a sort of kilty kind of coat yeah so the, the the contrast between this little man here and this huge guy here just i do i do i love that photograph yeah and uh, woman in the bin as i said earlier there was lots of street you know like displays and shows going on but this wasn't one of them for some unknown reason, I, I was just strolling around and this woman was sort of stood here. They put down all this stuff they're carrying, like coats and rucksack and all that kind of stuff. And she just climbed in the bin, tied this bin bag around her head. That's not a scarf, that's a bin bag. And just assumed this praying pose. Yeah. And because uh, you, you just ask yourself, why i mean she's sort of imitating slightly the uh, the old throw your rubbish in the bin sort of symbol there but yeah you you just cannot predict what people will do people people just sometimes just do the most unusual things and which is i always say always 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 carry your camera with you your a camera and just be ready to just keep looking about because there's so much stuff out there. Uh, now the Leica M2. 
this was a beat up old camera um, I bought this for £399 and I sold it for about £450 but Leica M2s now go for around about a thousand quid just for the camera body incredible uh, and this is a 50 millimeter Jupiter f2 lens the Jupiter is a Russian copy of the Zeiss sonar 50 millimeter f2 um, yeah a nice camera it's it remi the the Leica MD that I have now reminds me of the M2 because it's just simple it's shutter aperture on the lens um, fo manual focus uh, and a rangefinder yeah I quite uh, I do like that camera but the yeah the MD is uh, it's a fantastic camera very film like even though it's digital right this is an ex as I was talking about hyperfocus this is an example of just that I had the lens this is a they're about three and a half meters away uh, 50 millimeter lens and I had the lens focused to about it must have been about two meters I don't know why so they're just on the edge of being in focus but this was very quick because I'm going through this crowd and these two people appear these two women and it's one of those moments where you think well I'll take it I'll take the photo and if if they object I'll just I'll just wiggle my way out of it and I just lifted the camera up and clunk I'd already had the exposure of the camera set it was a quite a dull day it's coming up to Christmas time and uh, just clunk but yeah I developed the negative and it's slightly out of it, it is out of focus um, but they're wearing these glasses and these plastic beards and she's got a sort of carrot nose but the cape that she's wearing in a tartan sort of throw um, she's got this sort of vampire count sort of whoosh going on there so a nice bit of movement there but they're both absolutely fixated on the camera so yeah I, I do like that one now Manchester uh, there was this band playing well I say a band I believe this guy is the band and he has these friends that this one was he's obviously the lead air guitarist working on a solo there and uh, this guy's finding something quite amusing and uh, oh, the sign down here please don't feed the dog and it's a it's a stuffed toy yeah um, but there's this other chap who's obviously part of the uh, the entourage and he was out front just off off shot here dancing but I mean he's elderly gentleman late 60s mid 70s something like that and I've called this dad dancing he was doing the old rave kind of like shapes thing and this young teenage lad was hanging around and for me it's I mean he was absolutely beside himself he thought it was hilarious um, and he's doing a similar kind of thing with his hands there so for me that whole picture uh, yeah this was this was quite an early photo I took this was back uh, this is probably 2000 something like that with the uh, Leica M2 yeah dad dancing he the, the young lad makes the picture Oh, and finally this is one of the earliest street photographs I took and with the Leica M2 I call this Atlas because obviously you know homeless uh, chap but he Atlas because he's carrying his entire world on his shoulders he, he's even got his chair and I was stood outside another shop uh, as you tend to do waiting for the wife to come out and it was getting near the end of the day and I thought well you know the picture sort of potential subjects were uh, were few and far between and he just appeared 
and I'm like, my God. So I took the photo because I, you know, I thought if he objects, he objects and I'll just explain that it's just a hobby and, you know, and so on. Um, and sorry, you know, it's a film camera, so I can't show you the pictures. Um, but uh, he didn't object. Um, if, if I'd wasted too much time, you know, I thought, oh, well, maybe I won't. Oh, no, I won't take the picture. It, the moment would have been lost forever. And I'm very proud of this picture. It's, uh, it's one, of the, uh, one of the first I've ever taken. So, yeah, Atlas. Yeah. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> We've run out of there. Uh, run out of uh, pictures there yeah oh what I was gonna do I should have done right at the start was join me for a bottle of beer I don't uh, I don't drink a huge amount but I like to have a little tipple now and again this is Guinness West Indies Porter can you see that there can you, can you, yeah this there's a story with this beer um, it's Guinness but it's not Guinness in the stout sense it's a group of enterprising brewers on a quest to explore new recipes, reinterpret old ones, and collaborate freely to bring exciting beers to life. With origins, origins, origins in an 1801 entry in our brewer's diaries, Guinness West Indies Porter is complex yet mellow, hoppy with notes of toffee and chocolate. Yeah, yeah, six percent. But yeah, let's say. Uh, Let's enjoy a glass of beer. So here we go. It's quite a, it's a dark ale. It's not, uh, it's not Guinness in the Guinness sense. But then, you know, Guinness also do, they've got these reissues. They do one in a, uh, a milk stout and it's got a blue label on it. And they do a Guinness original, which isn't like your typical Guinness in a bottle. But yeah that it's a different sort of head it's bubbled rather than creamy but yes that's um that's quite dark that that's very dark i can't even see the light through it right, so uh, yeah cheers how much battery have i got ah, 67 minutes oh, wow that is coffee Definitely coffee, bit of rubber. Mm. It's not bitter, it's dry, but it's not um it's not like bitter. Oh yeah, that is dark and uh, chocolate, not quite chocolate, coffee. Mmm. Wow. Oh, I'll have to get a few more of these. Guinness West Indies Porter. Right. Well, there you are then. Um, hope you enjoyed looking at uh, some more photos there. Um, as I say, either drone next time or cooking. But there's going to be drone and cooking. And hopefully by then... When is it? Now, three weeks is next Monday, so we wouldn't have heard by then. But hopefully in the next week, we're going to have a rough idea of how long this entire crazy situation is going to go on for. I mean, there's talk about uh, an app, which uh, I won't go into my uh, concerns about that, but an app which will track where you go and your encounters with others and possibly warn you if you've been tested um, about uh, the coronavirus and it'll let you know people nearby whether they have the virus I mean pff, there's some social uh, sort of issues there and they believe ultimately businesses such as shops and trains and pubs and restaurants might insist that you scan this app before you enter various properties uh, in order to enter and if you don't get a green light you can't go in so certainly uh, unusual times ahead but anyway thank you so much for watching 
Um, don't forget to click like and subscribe and uh, any suggestions you have for other stuff as long as it doesn't involve boat maintenance because um, the boat doesn't need maintaining. Oh and I'm also, um, I've been meaning to do it for ages, I'm trying to sort out all the photography equipment I have, not one of them is usable as a webcam but I'm trying to work out some way with the equipment I have to do a uh, live stream. So keep an eye out and I'll, I'll give plenty of warning um, or plenty of notice I should say um, and yeah hopefully we'll have a live stream. All right so yeah cheers for now and uh, I'll see you next time. Ta <laughs> hmm. Ooh, why have I only got one bottle of this? Mm-hmm.